Roll up, roll up, come one and all. The circus is in town. And not just any circus. The greatest show in all the multiverse. Don't pay attention to the fact that the tents weren't here yesterday, or that you don't remember hearing anything about it before now. That's just the circus magic at work. And there's no circus more magical or more mysterious than Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting. It's a show so marvelous that even the SCP Foundation wants to get in on the act. So come watch the show, come feel the magic. After all, what do you have to lose? The story of this humbling traveling show begins in 1893 with the founder Herman S. Fuller. He was born into a wealthy family, and at the age of 21, he was invited by his uncle to Chicago to see the buildings his company had constructed for the World's Fair. He was dazzled by the sights he saw in the Windy City, and from then on he dedicated his life to finding a way to bring that same awe to people across America, and eventually, the world. After receiving a small loan from his uncle, Herman Fuller set about building the miraculous circus you see before you today. He knew he had to get a leg up over his competitors. After all, the 1890s were a golden age for traveling shows in America. So Herman devoted his time to research, trying to find acts and oddities that were truly out of this world. He learned the way between worlds, stole books from the Wanderer's Library, and with them studied alchemy, transmutation, sarcasm, and other supernatural disciplines. That real magic and touch of the macabre would be what made Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting so special, and would ultimately give it its longevity. Herman Fuller's first anomalous acquisition was a genuine Fiji mermaid, like the one that famed showman P.T. Barnum kept on display around the same time period. Unlike Barnum's, however, Fuller's mermaid had been brought to life. The crowds loved it, but like all attractions, pretty soon crowds grew bored of it and hungered for the next strange sight. So Fuller went about acquiring more curiosities. His next important acquisition was the man with the upside down face, or Manny for short. He serves as second in command to the ringmaster and manages things behind the scenes, including the acquisition of new talent. Many other anomalous beings and items were purchased for the circus by Fuller through the auction company known as Marshall, Carter, and Dark, another group that the SCP Foundation makes a habit of keeping tabs on. Another thing that sets this circus apart from any others is the clowns, because they aren't like any you've seen before. Though Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting employs professional clowns, the vast majority of the clown troupe are non-human descendants of an extra-dimensional race of magical shapeshifters. Nobody really knows why they decided to come to our reality and help Herman Fuller set up his circus, but the leading theory is simply that they were bored. These original clowns are the progenitors of the Turn Clowns and the Bread Clowns, Turn Clowns being humans who underwent a clown transformation procedure, and the Bread Clowns being artificially grown children produced by the other two types. Earlier in the circus's history, before we knew what we know today about genetics, much more barbaric methods were used to create new clowns. Young human subjects would be subjected to beatings and painful transfigurations at the hands of the circus's child breaker. These days, however, the circus no longer employs a child breaker. Instead, the creation of new clowns is the responsibility of resident clown breeder, Richard C. Normus. And before you say anything, don't laugh. That is his real name. Some of the most famous clowns in the troupe are Eugene and Pius, both of which are original clowns, Mr. Noodles, who is a bread clown, and Icky the troop leader, who was once a human with magical abilities known as Veronica Mason. She still possesses her anomalous powers as Icky, and her magic act is one of the most beloved parts of our show. After the sudden disappearance of Herman Fuller, Icky inherited his position as ringmaster, and has been doing a spectacular job ever since. Not every attempt to create new clowns has been successful as Icky and Mr. Noodles, though. Some of the earlier attempts were quite grotesque to look at. Herman Fuller's troop of clowns are an enthusiastic, happy-go-lucky, but occasionally violent bunch, capable of minor feats of reality bending that allow them to perform all manner of tricks. They live on a diet of mostly sugar and need to be milked regularly. 
Clown milk is an invaluable substance here at the circus, as it's the secret ingredient of the famous black cotton candy. Which, by the way, is free with admission. It causes the brain to produce high levels of serotonin, meaning that when you eat it, you're primed to have a great time. Be careful, though. Raw, concentrated clown milk is not for human consumption. Though the clowns love to drink it, even a small amount can cause a human to go into cardiac arrest due to an overload of happiness. The sound of Calliope music also goes a long way to helping people truly get the most out of their visit to Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting. The Calliope is self-playing and requires rolls of perforated paper to be loaded into it so that it can play a variety of pre-programmed pieces of music. Each piece produces a different psychological effect on visitors who have consumed their cotton candy. The skater's waltz will make them accept whatever they see at the circus, no matter how weird, as nothing out of the ordinary. Wonderful for making sure nobody blabs about their experience to a certain pesky foundation. Officer of the Year makes them less likely to perceive an event as unlawful. We use that one when we suspect the cops are closing in. Hail, hail, the gang's all here is used to get people to congregate at the big top for showtime. And American Patrol causes those who have eaten their cotton candy to seek out those who haven't, in order to strongly encourage them to have some. What do you mean you lost your dog is one that gets played after hours, when it's time to get the clowns ready for milking. Now that you have an idea of the history and how things work around the circus, it's time for the tour. The circus is made up of a series of tents and trailers, as well as a midway with standard rides and games that you might find at any circus. Outside of the big top where shows are performed once a day, there's also the Den of Freaks and the Hall of Humans Extraordinaire. The Den of Freaks is home to fantastic acts like Sluggo and Eliza the Living Head. Sluggo is a man whose eyes are on stalks like those of a slug and he can bend those stalks into any shape he wishes. He can even use them to create the shapes of human faces. Eliza the Living Head is a woman whose head lives independently of her body, which is safely kept in storage. Even without her body, she can speak and sing and often answers questions from the audience. The Hall of Humans Extraordinaire is home to performers who lack physical anomalies but otherwise display otherworldly talents like the amazing Zoltan, a fortune teller and alchemist who Fuller picked up at a place called the Utterly Bazaar. The Hall of Humans Extraordinaire also used to be home to Icky the Clown, back when she was still Veronica the Magician. The recent lineup has changed quite a bit thanks mainly to the activities of the circus's constant enemy. You guessed it, the SCP Foundation. Or as they are better known to the stable of interdimensional clowns as the Miss SCP Foundation. The Foundation does not appear to be a fan of circus folk, and many of the former acts are now in their containment. For example, Madame Rezarta and her amazing palm reader, also known as SCP-1884-A and SCP-1884-B. Madame Reserta was a blind Albanian woman in her 60s who was born without hands. She shared a psychic link with a creature named Luana, who was a large, shapeless entity made up of 932 hands. 929 of these hands appear to be those of an old woman and share Madame Rezarta's DNA. But the remaining three hands seem to be from a male Caucasian adolescent, an adult Hispanic female, and a Bengal tiger. Through her psychic link, Luana acted as Madame Reserta's eyes, feeling its surroundings to provide her with a mental map. Fuller attempted to buy the two of them when they were eight years old, but when their parents refused, he sent Manny to whisk them away under the cover of darkness. Madame Reserta's act involved sending Luana to feel the faces of audience members, and then trying to describe their appearance based on what Luana felt. The act was a hit, but Madame Rosarta claimed to have been horribly abused during her time with Herman Fuller. The two of them escaped while on tour and were picked up by old SCP while trying to rent a hotel room in the UAE. Then there's Virtuoso, also known as SCP-1860. Virtuoso was once a book of sheet music that was transfigured by Herman Fuller into one of the circus's original acts. It's a tall, thin humanoid being encased in a densely woven paper-based material that stretches like nylon or spandex. It constantly drips black ink, 
ink which it has a telekinetic control over. It uses the ink to create the shapes of musical notes which float around it while it sings. Virtuoso can sing in multiple voices at once across different vocal ranges and constantly performs arias and show tunes for whoever is listening. It was recovered from underneath a burnt-down shack at a fairground where the circus had been set up earlier. In containment, Virtuoso still sings, but translations from Italian reveal that the lyrics of the arias it's singing have been changed to reflect its own situation. Some of these translated lyrics include one day I'll tell you of my creation and life within the circus born from the ringmaster, his breed. Another act the circus dearly misses is Motormouth, also known as SCP-2094. He was one of the rare human clowns born in New York City in the late 70s. From birth he displayed a supernatural level of flexibility in his lower jaw. And as he grew older, he discovered that he could swallow large objects and store them in a kind of pocket dimension until he needed them again. Unlike Madame Rosarta, he went with Manny willingly, as even at eight years old, he knew that his alcoholic mother didn't care if he lived or died. Motormouth took to the circus like a fish to water and grew from a shy child into a very talented, talkative, and highly charismatic adult. He was a juggler first and foremost, who would catch pins, balls, and knives in his mouth as part of his routine. But the name Motormouth came later in his career when he let a stunt driver drive a car off a ramp and down his throat. However, as great an act he was, a conflict arose between him and Manny over Manny's questionable methods of sourcing new acts. Manny found out that Motormouth had been helping some of the anomalous kids that Manny brought in to get back to their families. And as punishment for his insubordination, he was locked in a box and left behind at the end of a Japanese tour. The box was marked for Essie, because Manny thought being put in containment was the best punishment he could think of. With how strange and unusual its acts are, and how it always seems to pop in and out of new locations at strange and unpredictable times. You might wonder if the circus has any sinister motives. Well, the truth is, though sometimes the acts can be a little gruesome, their methods of acquiring new talent are a little unorthodox, and the clowns a little out of control. Their only goal is to entertain. In that respect, they're no better or worse than any other circus. So we hope you've enjoyed your visit. Make sure to stick around for the show, and don't forget to take your complimentary serving of cotton candy. Because there's nothing quite like a day at the circus, especially one like Herman Fuller's. Now check out SCP Chaos Insurgency Explained, and secret group that runs the world SCP-05 Council Explained for more mysterious groups from the world of the Miss SCP Foundation.